I was just asking, uh, the initial question was whether you can tell us what the benefits of this particular project will be once the N2 Wild Coast, uh, Wild Coast Road uh, project is completed. Yes, thank you very much and good morning to your viewers and to yourselves. Um, it, first, it will reduce time for trucks by three hours, in fact, by one and a half hours, and if three hours, yes, trucks, and then for a small car, it will be one and a half hours. And, and, and also the, the bridge itself, as it is being built, we believe that it will be a tourist attraction. Um, it is in the middle of nowhere, but it is the highest bridge we are building, they claim, in the continent. And with that information and us spreading it, we believe that a number of people will want to come and see that bridge. The cables that are going to hold the bridge are already being put in place. And I just want to believe that people who are in the engineering, even students, might want to go and see what is happening. So yes, we are bridging as they were building a state of the art bridge in the middle of nowhere. That is going to save on time, but also that is going to ensure that investors we prob will probably consider investing in those rural parts of the Eastern Cape. More than anything, more than that, uh, we, we also, I mean, Sun Rally is also going to repair quite a number of other roads that are connecting to that main road that will be built because it's not just a bridge, but it is also a road that is being constructed. But there are other quite a number of roads in the Eastern Cape in the surrounding areas that are being, uh, that will be repaired or be constructed by Sun Rally that belong to municipalities, but also belonging to the province itself. And we think that that is infrastructure. I mean, that is that that is development. And therefore, if you look at the whole project, including the roads that we're talking about, Sandra is going to spend up to about 10 billion rand in that part of the of South Africa. Yeah, you know, Minister, as you're speaking here, even about the cost that will be incurred in being able to build uh, such a look. On the one side, it's very positive, for, given the fact that it does reduce travel time by two hours, and the, of course, the link to the other cities as well. But why this particular road? You know, why this particular project a priority? When many people could be asking about roads that are currently being used daily, that are in a state of disarray, needing to be repaired and to be maintained. Why embark on such a big project where up to 10 billion rand will be required if we can't maintain what we already have um, in hope of making our roads safer for all commuters, passengers and the like? First, I think Sandral roads are being maintained properly because Sandral is responsible for the national roads. So those are being maintained, they are being constructed properly. But also any road will bring development and, in fact, investment to any area. And that project, for sure, like I have said, it's not only about traveling, which I think is also important. Remember, N2 is very, is very busy. Mm. It's got quite a number of accidents. If you count the number, I mean, the roads that are said to be hazardous in South Africa, N2 will be amongst them because of the traffic volumes. So it's important that we have yet another route that people can actually use. This one is going to, to actually assist N2 and relieve the traffic on the N2 and therefore give the life of, I mean, N2, um, I, mean, I mean, give N2 the life that is supposed to live when it has been constructed or it has been maintained. Right now, because of traffic volumes, Sandral has on a repeated basis to maintain, has to maintain it. So you have got all those issues. But of course, like I'm saying, we are developing, if you look at the roads, they, the, the, these roads that we're talking about, they cut across urban areas. This one is actually cutting across rural people and they too deserve better. And I think that is important about this. If you look at the, 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 the escape, the, 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 the area there, the, the natural um in the Aula Paya, you will mm. find that it is indefinitely to be visited by tourists. And we think that that should be encouraged. As a matter of fact, if you can go there yourself, 
you will say, but why are we not marketing this place, even when it is being under construction? Because I believe that as we talk about other countries that are building this and that, as you talk about countries that are building, building uh, largest airports maybe in the continent, we too be, should be talking about that project to say we are building the highest and the longest bridge in South Africa in the continent. And, and, and therefore, should pe people should be interested to do that. So for me, that is an infrastructure development. Remember, a, our economic recovery and reconstruction plan is based on, on infrastructure development. And that is exactly what is happening in that area. And it's exciting that it is happening within the rural people. And the people that are employed there, the skills that are being transferred, the learnership that is taking place there, the majority of those people come from those surrounding areas and of course from the universities that are in the in the in, in the eastern cape and other parts of, of south africa and i said to to to, to the constructors there we have a, a mous with universities at the department of transport they can actually piggyback piggyback on them and have engineering students coming there even if they are not going to pay them a cent because in any event they are getting NSPAS. But they should form part of this experience, this exposure in building a, such an infrastructure in their country and say we didn't hear about it, but mm. we were there even if it was for two weeks uh, or mm. for three weeks and we learned something out of that. So for me, it's something that should be I mean, celebrated. And you know, rightly so, we need to celebrate things that um, government is doing right, right? But we also need to also hold government accountable for things that we, at least society, the citizens in this country, feel that they're not doing right. So let's talk about the update on the repairs to the roads in the in Guazulu Natal that were damaged by the floods. How are we looking on that? As we are building this state-of-the-art bridge, how are we doing with these particular roads that were affected by the floods? To be honest, we've done very well. Uh, one, they, 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 were, they, they, they were, I mean, uh, rail infrastructure that was damaged. We have repaired that, we're done with it. There were roads and bridges that were damaged. Many of them have actually been repaired. I think it's only one or two that is still outstanding. And it will be because maybe it needs more engineering work. And therefore, you need to do to do the, 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 the bidding and so on and so forth. But otherwise, we've done very well. Most of the roads that were closed during the flooding have now been opened. So as a matter of fact, if you think, so you're talking about Sandra, it's one of the state-owned companies that are doing some good job. Like I've said, even with this one project, it's not only the road which will belong to Central that they will be constructing. There are more than 20 roads that belong to the province and, and, and the municipalities that Central will be repairing. It is not the mandate of Central to actually repair uh, provincially and, and, and local municipality roads. But because of that project in the surrounding area, they then have identified some roads to say, we can't have the state of the road and have these roads in this in, in this in, in that bad shape. So yes, there is some work that is actually happening. But of course, with regards to other roads in the country, we are actually coming up with a plan on how we are going to ensure that they get repaired, they get uh, refurbished, but mm. also the gravel roads. Like I always say, in South Africa, we have 750,000 kilometer road network. Of that network, 79% is gravel. Mm. Only 21%, which is about 158,000 kilometers, is, is, is paved. So our approach should be saying, because we're not going to wake up tomorrow and have the 750,000 kilometer road, road network paved. That is tight, if you want. We therefore should have a, 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 a maintenance plan for the gravel roads and the maintenance plan for our paved roads. Mm. And that is exactly what we'll be talking about in the near future to say, how, what, what is it that we'll be doing with regards to our gravel roads that we might not have all the resources to pave them today, 79%. And if we are at 79% today, with the PRMG, with the, with the grant that we have, 
how are we going then to say we are increasing the percentages of the paved roads as we maintain our old or paved roads, but also maintaining our gravel roads. Yeah. So we, we're looking at, in fact, we are finalizing that strategy, which is going to talk to that. Yeah. Minister, I'm sure that we will be um, having up-to-date conversations regarding the very same uh, issues that you've raised here. I mean, you're talking here about 79% of gravel road in the country. That in itself says that there's still a lot of work to be done in the hope of actually getting, uh, you know, South Africa uh, to the place where we want it to be, a country where it's truly, uh, you know, it's got safe transportation systems, mm -hmm. but also roads that are user-friendly. Transport Minister, Minister Cindy Siwe-Chikunga, are giving us uh, the latest update on that.